I've always had a love-hate relationship when it comes to camera cages and mirrorless cameras. We gotta talk about it. What up, y'all? Tight shirt, Terry Warfield back in the building, and today, yeah, the shirt is tight. Hope you're having a good day so far. If this is your first time here, yo, a fat welcome to you. And if you're part of the fam, you came back, hey, Welcome back. Make sure you drop a hashtag fam in the comments, yo. We about to hit 20K if we have not done so already. By the time this video goes up, I just want to say I love all of y'all. Thank y'all so much for y'all support. If you haven't noticed, some things are changing. Still working on stuff, trying to make a new look, so don't mind the construction going on around me. But anyways, like I said, I've always had a love-hate relationship when it comes to cameras and the cages that people love to rig them out with. Now, I gotta be honest. Um, I've rigged out a few cameras and I, I, I get it. You know what I'm saying? I understand the purpose of it, but my main debacle is the size versus convenience factor, right? What? I bought a freaking mirrorless camera because I wanted it to be small, compact, lightweight, etc. And if I rig it out, that kind of takes away the portability of it. Now, I get it. A cinema camera, you cannot tear down. You can only build up where it's something like an A7S III. It's professional quality and you can build it up and also tear it down. Although it is missing some of those things from cinema cameras such as variable NDs and all of that good stuff. We know all of that, right? But you can tear down the A7S III. And I guess where one of my biggest problems comes from when it comes to using the A7S III cage and camera combo is the A7S III is one of my favorite cameras for photography. Now, even though it's only 12 megapixels, it takes some bomb pictures, right? And yeah, I could use my A7 III, but I still think this is better to use ergonomically, has better displays. Even though the A7 III could take better pictures, this one isn't far behind as long as you don't mind the megapixels. And I like being able to carry one camera for everything. I don't always want to bring two cameras, and that's why I haven't gone cinema. I don't always want to carry a cinema camera that can't take pictures because I love photography and video. So it's like when I build up the A7S III, when I got to go on gigs and stuff like that, yeah, it works for that purpose. But then when I want to take pictures, I got to take the whole freaking thing apart just to be able to use it as a regular camera. And I guess that's where my biggest issue comes from with using a camera cage with the A7S III. But anyways, now that that's out the way, I guess I will show you what I use for my A7S III quote unquote rig. Mine is not super fancy like you see a lot of people. In fact, it's kind of a Franken rig to be honest with you. Let's get into it. Now, before we move forward, if you like this video so far, do me a favor and drop a like on it if you have not done so already. If you dislike the video, make sure you drop two likes on it. You know, gotta make sure you drop them double likes for me. Hey, I really appreciate that. Y'all don't know how important that thumbs up is on this video. Also, now would be a good time to join the fam. If you ain't joined already, hit that subscribe button, also hit the notification bell. And real quick, let me change the song. I gotta put on some heat for this whole thing we about to build. Hold up. Mm. Oh. Yeah, that's a good one right there. Yo, that came from Epidemic Sound. If you don't have a music service, you need copyright free music for your videos. There's a link in the description for you to test them out for free, no credit cards required for 30 days. I use Epidemic for everything, sound effect, music, all that stuff. Try it out, let me know what you think. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to my Franken rig of my A7S III. Now, I have a cage for my A7 III. A lot of this stuff on the table, I'm sorry, I did not pay for a lot of it. I mean, my bad, I got partners and stuff like that. Don't blame me, but. Some of the stuff I paid for, some of the stuff I didn't. And I didn't plan on initially like building out a huge rig. So some of these pieces I've kind of, you know, patched together. But I guess that's the beauty of camera cages. You can just build them how you want to build them. So let's start off with the basics. This is my main video rig when I get client jobs or whatever. I use my A7S III. The quality out of it is outstanding. Like I'm still blown away. This camera is a freaking cheat code, yo. So my A7S III. My main workhorse lens is my 24 to 70 Gangsta Mode G Master. Oh yeah, y'all see it, it's right there. It's big, it's heavy, but the images out of it, they just look so freaking good, yo. So this is my workhorse lens when I'm out in the field because it covers wide enough and also telephoto enough at a constant aperture f2.8. You can't really lose with that out in the field. Now, as far as what I have on the front of it, Moment Cinebloom, 82 millimeter, 10% diffusion, filter. Yo, I love Cinebloom filters. If you don't know what diffusion filters do is they, they kind of soften your image. And I, I left this Aperture MC right here for a reason. Do you see how there's like this kind of glow around it? You know what I'm saying? It's kind of a glow. That is what diffusion filters do. So they get rid of that overly digital sharpened look that mirrorless cameras have because they are so freaking 
almost electronic looking sharp, right? So diffusion filters get rid of some of that. Now, when I'm not using this one, if I need something that has an ND built into it also, then I actually use the ones from Freewell. They make a two to five stop and also a six to nine stop. And the dope thing about these is there's a mist filter built into it. These are clutch out in the field because you got a diffusion filter plus an ND filter built into it. And you know, they high quality. They got hard stops built into them, which I really like. So if I'm not using the Moment Cinebloom because these don't have ND built into it, I'm using the Freewell VND plus mist combo. And the other thing I really love about the Freewell ones is they come with these freaking magnetic lens caps. So you don't have to fumble around with like putting your lens cap on while there's a filter on there and all that stuff. This is magnetic and it goes right on the front. How freaking dope is that? But anyways, yeah. So let's go ahead and start with the cage itself. Small rig. This is just the basic one that they offer. As you can kind of see, it's no frills. It's got a cold shoe on it, mountain points. Uh, let's go ahead and put this bad boy on. So first thing we got to do is take off the 24 to 70 gangster mode. Now, you should take off these eyelets, right? But I like to keep these on because sometimes I like to use the camera with a strap. So I actually keep them on. So the only thing you gotta do, drop it in there, make sure those eye things are out the way. And at the bottom, just like any other small rig cage, you just screw it in. Now, the A7S III actually has a tool that comes with it, a magnetic one to screw this in. However, I can't find it. So I'm just gonna use my fingernail to tighten this down since I'm not tightening it down all the way. And then once we have that on there, we reattach the lens and bada bing. Now, I do like to run it like this because this offers additional protection versus not having it. I can go outside and sit this down and not have to worry about scratching the bottom of my camera. If it does drop, I would much rather it fall on the cage itself versus on the camera itself. Now, as far as the side handle, some people prefer to put the side handle on the right hand side where the grip is, which I just think is silly because you already got a grip here. Why wouldn't you want to mount it on the opposing side so that you have two grip points, right? So I opted for the aluminum black one from Small Rig. I'll put the part number in the description. And this is the NATO one. So you don't have to worry about screws. There's just a little clamp here. You put it on the side of it and you, you clamp it down and it is sturdy. Like, I mean, extra sturdy. I'm just gonna slide it on here and tighten it down and boom just like that it can handle all of the weight that you put on the camera now the other good thing that i love about this handle is there is a cold shoe mount on here so i know a lot of people like to mount their monitors to the top of their camera but i actually prefer to mount mine on the side of it now i probably should have put this on first before i even thought about attaching that and that is the hdmi clamp so you want to open this door first before you attach the handle and then you line this up there's two tracking pins you just basically slide that on there i got it on the wrong way put it in the hole <laughs> and you tighten it down a little bit. Now this will actually kind of snap itself or guide itself into place. Now the HDMI cable is a foot long one that I got off of Amazon. I ordered like six or seven different ones. I tried to find one that was the perfect length and with this side handle, this length is perfect. So it's a foot long, there's no coils or anything. It looks extra clean. You put that in the port and once you tighten down, this, it locks the HDMI cable into place. So you see what that looks like. Now, once you got the HDMI clamp on there, then you can attach the handle, which is what I should have did in the first place. So, boom. Now that that's on there, as you can see, the handle can handle all of that weight with no problem with one turn of that thumb wheel. So anyways, we got our cage on, we got our HDMI clamp on, we got our handle on. The next thing I wanna do is mount the Atomos Ninja V. Now, Atomos did send me this monitor. Again, I did not pay for it. Go ahead and cuss me out. Oh, Terry, you lucky. Listen, don't hate, okay? I'm making all these videos. Of course, they want to send me stuff. Now, transparency. I don't use the Ninja V to record externally because the codex out of the A7 III internally are, I mean, they are so good, especially if you film an S-Log 3. It's so much dynamic range that I just haven't felt the need to film externally with the Ninja V. Now, could you do it to get ProRes raw and all that stuff? Yeah, but I ain't ready for that workflow yet. So right now, the main things that I use the Ninja V for is for monitoring. Um, I do use it also if I wanna screen record what I'm using in the camera. So a lot of times I'm doing like lens reviews and I wanna show what the camera is seeing on the screen. I'll use the Ninja V to record that. But as far as like recording footage on it, I'm just recording straight in the camera because the footage out of it is that freaking good. I love the Ninja V, but I just don't use it for recording like that. Now, as far as the battery goes for the Ninja V, I got these cheap batteries. These are newer batteries off of Amazon. Yo, they work just like the original Sony's. You slap that bad boy in there. 
As far as the hard drive, I have a Skynix 500 gigabyte hard drive that I got off of Amazon for 50 bucks. It's worked without a hitch. I'm able to edit off of it and all that stuff, so I haven't had any problems with that. So you put that bad boy in the caddy, plug this into the Ninja. Now, as far as mounts to actually put the monitor on the handle itself, I just happen to have one from Aperture Land around from when I used these Aperture MCs. So I was like, why would I buy one when I got some already? And the only thing you gotta do is screw this into the bottom. All right, make sure if you use something like this, there is a small gap in the mount itself. You need to make sure this is facing the front of the camera so that you can tilt the monitor back and forth. All right, I got that locked in. There's a cold shoe mount on the top of the handle. Slide that right into the cold shoe mount. You wanna make sure that bad boy is tightened all the way down because you don't want your Ninja V slipping out while you're trying to use it, right? And then you connect the HDMI end cable up here. So now you see the cable is just long enough. And when I pick it up, the handle can support the weight of the Ninja V, the camera, the cage, all that stuff attached. Now, I also have a top handle. This is the cheapest top handle that Small Rig offers. They did send me this, I did not pay for it. I wish I would have known that they had more premium ones because I would have asked for the premium ones, but this is not a NATO handle. This is just a regular thumb screw handle. Line it up on top, screw these bad boys in. Okay, so now I have my side handle, my Ninja V, my top handle if I wanted to do this type of thing, or if I wanted to use it this way, now I have a grip on both sides, this and also this. And if I wanna get underslung, then now I have a handle to use on top. Now, the good thing about the handle, even though it is the cheap one, there is a cold shoe mount on the front of it. So if I wanted to mount a microphone, I have some mics here from Deity. Big shout out to Deity for sending these over. Now, if I'm doing like a small event, like a reception or something like that, then I would just mount the Deity right on the top of here. You can mount whatever mic you wanna use. If you wanna use like a Rode Wireless Go, you could do that. I would do that, but right now I'm using it. Put that right on there, tighten it down, flip it around, and then plug in your microphone now also i got the deity d4 duo here uh i probably wouldn't use this for like a paid event just because it's not a it's not a powered microphone uh these deity d3s and d3 pros are powered so they're going to give you better audio but if you did want to vlog and stuff like that the d4 duo is super dope so i'll go ahead and uh, put that back to the side but this is my franken rig right here yo a7S3 plus 24 to 70 gangster mode, usually some type of filter. Left handle is from Small Rig. Got the Atomos Ninja V on top. Amazon HDMI cable that was real cheap. Doesn't look gaudy at all. It's not hanging all over the place. Super cheap top handle and a Deity D3 to capture ambient audio. If I do need to get like important audio, I will obviously mic up whoever the subject is and use the D3 for redundancy. But this is what my rig looks like. I think one of the things I would like them to change most, and I know they came out with like another version of this, but I don't like how I got to stick my finger up underneath the cage to hit these buttons up here. And like I said, I know they came out with a new one and there's also other main manufacturers that make them but you know i just happened to link up with small rig first the other thing i wish that this had is like a built-in arca swiss plate at the bottom but you know oh uh, well i guess it's whatever yo let me know what y'all think about camera rigs in general which one do you use or you think about copying one let me know down in the comments below there will be links to all of this stuff down in the description if y'all like any of it make sure you use my links i really appreciate it but uh that's all i got for you so until next time i think that's it i am out peace and chicken grease terry warfield peace